everyone. I'm Jensine Bard, and welcome to Testimony, where truth is told, lives are changed, and hope is given. Revelation 12:11 tells us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, a testimony of your story for His glory. Last week, you heard the heart-wrenching story of a gifted musician whose abusive, jealous, and alcoholic father, with an equally abusive and by all accounts mentally unstable mother, nearly destroyed this young man's life, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. With no one to talk to, validate, or truly love him, as a parent should, Russ escaped into the only comfort that could fostering a 40-year addiction to alcohol hidden from all who knew him, including his family. But love, hope, and healing were on the way, and this iconic singer would soon be singing a new song with his latest release, Believe, and sobering, stunning documentary, I Still Believe. And that's where we begin the rest of our story in part two of my conversation with legendary Christian recording artist, Russ Taff. Russ, welcome back to Testimony. Thank you, Jen Zing. That's <laughs> I love being here. I love talking to you off, off, off the uh, radio. <laughs> You've got a great story. Well, same here, and it's a joy for me to talk to you, Russ. First question, here we go. What was the turning point that began the healing process for you? Well... I did what what you did. Uh, I pushed it away, act like it didn't happen, and but down underneath everything else, there was just this rage. And like I said, the first time I sobered up, I had ten years, and my dad died, and all of these things just come boiling out of me. And I stopped the pain the only way I knew how at the time, and that was to drink for about a week, uh, and I relapsed. I got back on track. I was nine years sober. My mother died. And neither one of them would go to a place that would allow me to get some type of asking them asking them to forgive me or me to forgive them. And it never came. Uh, and mm. the therapist, that marriage counselor that Tori and I were, were seeing and saw me, you know, saw me for years. And she saw this family thing every time I get close to it. You know, I run away. And she told me, she said, Russ, you're never going to be free from this until you deal with the trauma of the whole thing. Because trauma has totally rewired your brain. And it, it's anchors that when it's hit, you don't know where to go or how to do. And so God led me to this place in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And their main thing, I, you know, I'd been to treatment. But uh, their main thing was dealing with childhood trauma that I didn't know what to do with. Uh, and it took me so long to let go of that Pentecostal God that I wasn't measuring up. I wasn't measuring up. I mm-hmm. wasn't good enough. But when I got there, you know, I, it was a 30-day thing where they went, really went down inside of me, and, and all of it just started coming up. And, I, you know, one story would lead to another memory, to another memory, to another memory. And when I left there, I wasn't angry anymore. And not everybody has to do it that way. I mean, God heals us all in different ways. But that's what it took for me. And I remember, you know, leaving that place and feeling free for the first time in my life. And those old voices were gone. The old accusations were gone. And when I, I, I went down to Mark Lowry's, uh, every year we all get together, about four artists and our spouses and stuff, and we have three days of just talking, laughing, sharing Jesus, and encouraging each other. And Mark's uh, friend, Dina, her pastor, was in the hospital dying and asked if I would just come by and say hello to him. He loved the DVD that gets it in on me. So I, mm-hmm. I went. I packed up my acoustic, and I go down to the uh, hospital. And when I walk in, I, I just it stops me in my feet. I mean, it just stops me dead cold because he looks so much like my dad. Now, God has healed me emotionally. You know, God has healed my body and and mm-hmm. and was healing my mind, uh, but my spirit hadn't been healed. And so that day in that hospital room, 
the presence of God came down, and he, I asked me to pray for him. And I, I, how do you pray for a prophet, you know? Um, but when he was done, I asked him to pray for me. And he stood up, and his hands on my shoulders, just like my dad, blue eyes like my dad, uh, big hands like my dad, salt and pepper gray hair like my dad. I mean, it was freaky. And as he began to pray, I began to cry. And I fell to my knees. I couldn't stand anymore, and he kept, he pulled my head to his belly and began to stroke my hair and started affirming me like a dad would a son oh. and telling me how proud he was that I'd used my gift for Jesus and how happy Jesus was that, you know, given him, uh, you know, the service of my life, and the more he did that, the harder I cried, and I felt, I, I, I promise, but when I left there, going back to Mark's house, something was changed, and the Holy Spirit healed my spirit so you know it's like the first thing the mind was healed and then and then uh my body and then you know uh and my mind was trapped by the new, renewing uh you know meditating in god's word uh, and mm -hmm. my spirit was whole and i felt god reach down and heal all those broken little cracks that i thought i would have to live with the rest of my life but it was one of the most transforming supernatural things i've ever experienced and, you know, just that desire to drink and run away from pain, it stopped. It stopped. And the Holy Spirit showed me how to run to Him when I get scared or when I get angry, that I won't run away, that I'll run to Him. And it has completely changed me and made me a full-grown man in the kingdom of God. And uh, I'm not a victim anymore. And I'm not some guy that, you know, was uh, bad was done to him. But... Me and the Holy Spirit just began to work together, and the healing came, and it was so powerful. And that's the thing that I want to get across to people. You're never too far. You're never too far that God can't reach out and bring you in. It just takes being able to be willing to tell someone in on your secret and to speak it out loud to someone and find somebody that you trust that won't gossip. But when you say it out loud, it breaks its power by a whole lot. And you can stand with someone and accountable and uh, the Holy Spirit begins its process. But what we do as Christians, I don't know who set the bar so high, maybe when the Puritans came over. <laughs> but to be a Christian, the bar is so high. And... You know, to obtain it, you've got to be this, got to be this, got to be this, got to be this. And we forget that when we come to Jesus, we're babies. We don't even know how to walk yet. But there's all these rules that were placed on our salvation that I don't think Jesus had a whole lot to do with. I don't sin today because, you know, it's a bad, bad thing. I don't, I, I don't sin today because it would hurt Jesus' feelings. And I love him so much. But And then when I do, I immediately go to him, and he deals with it. But... You know, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I got to experience this healing before I died. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to legendary Christian recording artist Russ Taff, whose heart-wrenching yet hopeful DVD documentary, I Still Believe, will have you doing just that, believing that no matter the shame, the pain, the glory, or the fame, Christ's love and grace breaks every chain. You can learn more about Russ Taff's music ministry and mission by visiting RustTaff.com and RustTaffMovie.com and support his work. Get his critically acclaimed DVD documentary, I Still Believe, and long-awaited worship album, Believe, and share it with others, your church, or anyone needing hope and freedom from addiction, you will be inspired and blessed that you did. Russ, thank you for once again sharing your heart, your life, your story, and your music, which has impacted millions around the world and slated to impact millions more with your stunning DVD documentary, I Still Believe, and just released worship album, Believe, yours is a story of Christ's redemptive love, the love of a faithful wife and loyal friends, and the will to still believe 
and beautifully so. We thank you. God bless you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Russ Taft, I Still Believe. Testimony is a global broadcast made possible by the generous contributions of our valued partners at Jensen Bard Ministries and you, our listening audience. Together, we are reaching souls for Christ, one testimony at a time. If you would like information on how you can support this broadcast with your tax-deductible gift, please visit us at jensenbard.com. That's one word, J-E-N-S-I-N-E-B-A-R-D dot com. And join the conversation at our Facebook page, Testimony with Jensen Bard. Thank you for listening, and please join us again for Testimony. Testimony.